To another broadcast of The Prelude, we are so happy to invite you into this virtual space on this morning. I am Minister Otis Bird Jr. It's my honor to serve as the assistant to the pastor for online ministry here at the historic Alfred Street Baptist Church. And you all know we are here every Sunday morning at 7.36 and 10.36 a.m to intentionally engage with you, our virtual church family. As you all can see, worshipers have already begun to fill the sanctuary on this morning. And guess what, you all? I haven't had a co-host in a few weeks, but today I am blessed and honored to have a great woman, a hardworking woman here at the Alfred Street Baptist Thank Church you. by my side. Good morning. Good morning. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to the prelude? Good morning, Alfred Street. Good morning, our online worshipers. I am Stephanie Garcia. And tell us about all of the many things that you do here at Alpha Street. So I am a co-lead for the chat moderators, um, also now named the Virtual Care and Engagement Ministry. I am also serving on the Finance and Budget Committee. I sing in the Voices of Triumph, the best choir, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we won't say that too loud. Right, we won't say that too loud. Amazing. And how long have you been a member? I've been a member of Alfred Street for 11 years. Sounds good. And you have a husband that's involved in ministry I here too, right? I do have a husband, Melvin Garcia. Hey, baby, shouting you out. <laughs> um, yes, and he is actually, uh, he serves on the membership, the protective members services. Absolutely. Keeping us safe here at Alfred Street. Yes. Well, Stephanie, welcome and thanks for being with us here on The Prelude. Thank you. You all, it's important. You all get to see a face with the name. The chat moderators do hard work every time that we have worship in the virtual space. So we just appreciate you all Thank for you. all that the chat moderators do and what you and Lauren, your co-leader, do to just facilitate everything. And I see we have a moderator on this morning. We do. Hey, Ooh. Joyce. <laughs> so if you have any needs in the virtual space today, just uh, tap Joyce on the virtual shoulder and she'll be more than happy to assist you. Thank you again for being with us. Here, tell us about the chat moderators. What do you all do? Why is it important uh, as a ministry here at Alfred Street? Yes, yeah, so as the chat moderators, we serve as the greeters, we serve as the engagers, and we also serve as protectors of the space, um, the online atmosphere. And so it's ushers so and security at the same time. At the same time, <laughs> at the same time, hard job. Um, you know. And it's so important uh, just because we want our online membership to feel the same experience that that our members who are actually here in the space feel. So we want to give them the sanctuary experience. Absolutely, absolutely. And we want you to put your names and your cities into the chat. You know how we do it on the prelude. We want to shout you out on this morning. Let's go ahead and shout a few people out, Stephanie. Okay, let's see. Um... Shout some Shout folks out. out. We have Jam John, who is checking in from, oh, from Richmond, Richmond Virginia. Virginia. Welcome, welcome. Let's yes. see who else we have. We've got Mark Dixon from Gloucester, Virginia. Sounds good. We have Annette Brown, who says good morning. Thank you for checking in. We have Ken Harris, who's checking in from Las Vegas, Nevada. Woo. Good morning and welcome. Let's do one more. Let's do Dorothy Dodson from Butler, Pennsylvania. PA is in the house. Good morning and welcome to the Prelude. Well, you all know last week on the Prelude, we started something new and it's going to become my favorite segment of the Prelude. The top five. Shout out to our producer, Tiffany Diggs, who keeps all great things going on the Prelude. We have the top five for this week and starting off this week, uh, we want to announce Thankful Thursdays. Fall Revival is in full effect. On last week, we had the Bishop Joseph Walker III. If you all missed it, you missed a treat. I encourage you to go back on our YouTube uh, page and find that sermon. But this week, we will welcome the Reverend Dr. Charlie Dates, and we have a video we want you to check out now. Tuesdays, that is, you all. It's September. I guess I'm thinking about Thanksgiving already. But thankful Tuesdays. Meet us on Tuesday here in the sanctuary and in the virtual space. Take us to number four, Stephanie. And 
in the number four on our top five things that we are excited about this week, our pastor's pick book of the month, Lovely One, by Katanji Brown Jackson, the first black woman on the Supreme Court. Sounds good. And while you're at it, go ahead and take us to number three. Sure. The number three thing we are most excited about this week, the Alpha Street Experience in Charlotte. Yes, and we have a promo video. We want you to check it out now. It's happening again. Once again, it's on. If you thought the Philadelphia experience was something, wait till you see Charlotte. That's right, Charlotte. We are on our way to you for the Alpha Street Experience, October 17th. We'll see you there. Coming in at number two, uh, we are super excited about this. You know, every second Saturday, we have our ordinance service. So join us either in person or in the virtual space on this coming Saturday at 6 p.m. as we baptize, as we extend the right hand of fellowship, and as we sup at the Lord's table together and observe Holy Communion. Stephanie, take us to number one. And the number one, our favorite and our beloved senior pastor, yeah. the Reverend Dr. Howard John Wesley, is preaching this morning. And let me tell y'all, if he preaches anything like he preached at Woo! eight, you are in. I know I say that almost every week, no, but, but you it's are. For real. It's real. It's yeah. an amazing message. So come on in. Let's shout a, a few more people out this morning. Let's start up there. We got West Coast in the house. Oh, we got West Coast. Ragabini 75 from That's Los right. Angeles, California. Check again from the West Coast. And one more, uh, we have Chris who is checking in from Charlotte. I hope you just heard that announcement and you'll meet us, tell your friends and your families to meet us in Charlotte on October 17th. Well, you all know here on the Prelude, we like to, ver to intentionally engage with you, but we also like to connect you, our virtual church family, with our in-person worshipers. And this morning, we have a very, very special guest. Come on over looking beautiful this morning go ahead and introduce yourself to the prelude well good morning and thank you very much my name is Jeanette Howard I am the president of the senior ministry here at Alpha Street Baptist Church Woo! the seasoned ministry are called the seasoned saints and you all this is one of the first ministries I engaged as an intern at their picnic and I still remember the good time. And let me tell y'all something. Some of the best line dancers are here at Alfred Street Baptist Church. They know how to have a good time. So tell us about the Season Saint Ministry. What do you all do? Okay. The most important thing, we try to stay connected. Connected in this ministry. Um, we fellowship on the second and fourth Wednesday of every month. And we start with Bible study. And I love the Bible study because we get to have all of the ministers, all of the interns come and present to us. And they always bring us a good word. And so that is my biggest and my favorite part of the ministry. And then we fellowship by having lunch together. And so that keeps the saints together. And we did this every, even through the pandemic. That's how we stay connected. Absolutely. So tell us a few, something exciting coming up for the Season Saints and how people can get involved if they want to uh, connect with the Season Saints. So if you want to become a member of the Season Saints, join us at Bible study on Wednesdays at noon here in the sanctuary. And you can send an email to seniors at alphastreet.org and our secretary will email you back and you'll get connected with us through our emails. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Well, Sister Jeanette, we thank you for being with us here on the Prelude, and I hope to see you at the next Season Saint event. And shout out to the Reverend Dr. Marcia Norfleet for her leadership. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you so much for being with us. All right. Jeanette well, is awesome. you all, it is time for worship. It is almost time for worship, you all. I hope your hand claps are ready. I hope you've gotten your communion elements together. Let's get prepared for worship. We will be blessed in music by the voices and sounds of 
of our mill chorus under the capable direction of Melvin Bryan. You all, they are ready to lift the Savior in song. They are about to process in, and you all already heard Stephanie announce the Reverend Dr. Howard John Wesley is in the house and will be bringing the message on today. Well, you all, it's about time for worship to begin. We are about to sign out. We thank you all for being with us here on the prelude, and we will see you next time. Bye. Bless the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord. Come on, if you're glad to be in the house one more time, let's begin with giving God praise. Come on, the word is clear. We enter his gates with thanksgiving. Anybody enter his course with praise? Anybody thankful unto him? Well, the result is let's bless his name for the Lord is good. Come on, if you know that he's good, Put your hands together and begin to give God thanks for another day. Come on, let's give the giver of life praise that he's due. Come on, the older saints would say he woke me up this morning and started me on my way. Hallelujah. Come on, there's a song that we're going to open up with. We invite you to just stand with us. It says, you give life, you are love, and we pour out our praise. It's another way to say, let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. If you've got breath this morning, we invite you to wave your hands and give God thanks for the breath that he gives. How many of you know some people are in their grave wishing they could be where you are, praising God? You give life, you are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. So we say, great are you, Lord. Help me say, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you, only you. Help me say, great are you, Lord. You give life, you are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Can you help me say, great are you, Lord. It's your the earth 
we shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing great are you lord come on help me say it. all the earth all the earth will shout your praise. our hearts will cry our hearts will these cry. bones will these sing bones will lift sing. it up great
want to lift your hands and say, Great are you, Lord. He's never let you down. He's always looking out for you. So great are you, Lord. Just one last time, great are you, Lord. Great. Almighty God, how great is our God. Come on, clap, clap, clap. Come on. We're going to give him the glory because he's worthy of all the praise. Amen. Come on, everybody, say this. Say yo. Say yo. our God and all will see how great how great is our God come on, come on, come on yeah we serve a mighty, mighty good God and it's my pleasure to give him praise this morning, everybody lift your voice how great, come on how great is our God come on sing with me how great God say, God, God, all the earth will see, see how great, how great, say oh, see oh, come on, see oh, oh, everybody say I will praise you. Yeah. 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 You got it? Come on. I lift my hand, I lift my hand to give you glory. And I lift my hand, I lift my hand to give you praise. To give you praise. I praise you, Lord.
If you know God's been great one more time, if you know God answered one more prayer, if you know God forgave one more sin, lift up your hands, open up your mouth, for God is great and greatly to be praised. Good morning, Alfred Street, and we want to welcome you to worship as we praise a God who is great and reigns forever and ever and evermore. For those who are joining us in the sanctuary, in Overflow, and online, we want to welcome you to worship this morning. Our scripture comes to us from Isaiah 43, verses 1 through 5, the first clause of verse 5 from the New Revised Standard Version. You can find it on the screens, on your devices, or in your Bible. And it reads these words. But now, thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Family, those are important words to remember as we turn to God in the moment of prayer, because there are some who find themselves feeling alone this week, and even in the sanctuary, probably feeling alone right now. And so we turn to God in prayer, and as we pray for those persons, for those communities, we also hold those who are walking through the valley of the shadow of death. We pray for Janae Johnson, who is mourning the loss of her great uncle, Paul Wright Jr., we pray for Adrienne Gacy in the passing of her mother, Mamie Walker. We pray for Wanda Kyle Archer, Veronica Maxwell, and David Kyle in the passing of their aunt, great aunt, Ina Hardaway. We pray for Benita Still in the passing of her father, Robert Still. We pray for Pamela Harrison in the passing of her brother, Merkel Michael Emmanuel Phillips Sr. We pray for Andrea and Gary Bennett in the passing of their daughter, Melanie Jones. These are the names that I have on my list, but are sure their names not on this paper that you probably hold right now. So I invite you to say their names aloud, type their names in the chat as we prepare to turn to God in prayer. What and who are you praying for this morning? Let us pray. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. So we turn to you right now. God, when we lift our hands and when we open our mouth, it's not just praise and worship we give, but we surrender all to you because we, are, we know that you are able to do amazing things and you are able to do with what we have, what we cannot. So God, we invite you in this space to meet us where we are. We avail and open ourselves to you. And God, we pray to encounter you in a new way that we have not yet seen, heard, or felt. So that when it's all said and done, we didn't just hear good music, we didn't just hear a good word, but God, we were inspired and compelled to be different than when we came in. 
God, we pray over our music ministry as they usher us through song. We pray for our pastor as he stands to proclaim a word from on high. We pray, God, for those who are watching, those who are here. We ask, God, that you just meet us in our time of need. And when it's all said and done, we'll be careful to give your name the praise, the honor, and glory. And this is our prayer we render to you. In the name of Jesus, we collectively said, amen. amen. Our hymn of rejoicing this morning is the solid rock. Join us. While you remain standing on that solid rock, be sure to pass the peace to your neighbor on your left and your right. Let us pass the peace this morning.
Good morning, family. To our guests who gather with us today in worship, both in this space and to all of our family and friends who connect with us over the world wide web. Grace and peace be unto you from God who loves us as a mother and a father. And Jesus Christ, who always and alone is still our resurrected, our risen, our reigning, and our returning Redeemer. If you're happy to be in the land of the living and in the Lord's church on this day, would you just help me worship God with thanksgiving and praise for another beautiful day that the Lord has made. Joyfully, we enter this space to make glorious the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. As we gather today, we remind ourselves in reverence and remembrance that it is only through the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that we gather. If you confess and believe in that, then prayerfully you did receive the elements for our Lord's Supper. If you did not, would you just wave a hand, allow our deacons to have the privilege of serving you as we grant to you the cup and the bread, and we invite those online to also take hold of whatever bread and cup you will use to join in with us as we hold sacred this moment of remembrance of all that Christ did on the cross for us. You know, in this life, it's amazing how often we are reminded of and highlight our differences rather than our commonalities. That it is easy to be hateful and bitter and angry with people you think that are absolutely different than you. When you realize that you all have some things in common, kind of bond and bind together. So start a football season. I was coming through the airport the other day. There are all these people wearing these Eagles jerseys. You're missing the point of where I'm going. And I happened to see one fella in there with a cowboy jersey on, and even though I didn't know him, I knew we had something in common. We both know the language of prayer and fasting. We both know what it means to suffer in long patience. But even though he was different, it was that commonality that drew us together. There's some things I want to promise you you have in common with everyone on your pew. Everyone on your pew is a sinner. They may not advertise it, you may not know it, it may not be public, but I promise you this, everyone you're sitting next to falls short of the will of God. And your sin is no less than theirs. I said this at eight o'clock, if you think your sin is holier than your neighbor's sin, you just added another sin to your list. <laughs> We're all sinners. And here's what else we have in common, we can't fix ourselves. No matter how much we try, we can't get right by ourselves. And here's the third thing we have in common. Christ died for you. Christ died for me. Christ died for us that on this day, September 8th, 2024, we as sinners could gather in this space and declare that we're saved by grace. That's why my brother and my sister, we do take bread and we do drink cup to remind ourselves that we are broken, that we cannot fix ourselves, but in Christ and in Christ alone, we are redeemed. The bread that we eat represents the broken body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who are always and alone is our Christ. Crucified, dead, buried, resurrected, ascended into heaven, sitting at the right hand of God, interceding for our sins, and one day to the glory of the Lord returning. This we believe as we break bread and eat together.
And in this cup is a memorial of the blood shed on the cross of Calvary for our forgiveness, for our redemption, for the security of our soul's salvation. Christ suffered, bled, and died that we might live in abundance. The blood of our Lord and Savior, let us drink together. Won't you pray with me? Lord, we receive in our faith in Jesus Christ what you offer through your amazing grace and love. The complete forgiveness of our sins, the eternal security of our soul's salvation, the precious indwelling person of the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us, and the opportunity and obligation we have to share your transformative love with others as we seek to make more disciples. Thank you for loving me, oh God. May I return that in love of others. Thank you for forgiving me. May I freely offer the same to each other. This is our prayer and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. As we gather in this space today, we want to welcome our guests who are with us. Is Sister Rosalind Glenn here? I heard she was going to be at church. Rosalind, are you at church today? Sister Rosalind Glenn, she didn't make it in yet. All right. We do want to recognize our guests who are with us. Whenever we've got a new face in our midst, we believe God is in worship with us. And so if you're a guest of our church family and you'll allow us the privilege of welcoming you, we're going to ask all of our family and guests, if you just raise a hand, then we can thank God for you. Any guests with us? Alpha Street, would you help me welcome those whose hands are raised. Come on, make them feel at home. Thank God for our guests on today. Bless you. If you're watching online, what you put in the chat where you're watching from. To all of our guests who are present today, we welcome you. We're grateful that God has ordered your steps to this place. We believe that worship is going to be the better because of you. And may God grant you traveling grace and mercy wherever home may be when you leave. Please know that if you're ever near Alpha Street Baptist Church again, I'm going to tell you in the words of the good old TV show, y'all come on back now, you hear? We were glad to have you in worship with us one more time. As we welcome those who are with us today, we have a special group of members who are worshiping as well. Um, we're getting back into our fall season. Our Sunday school curriculum team is worshiping together. I'm going to ask all those who work on Sunday school if they would stand. I want to acknowledge them for the work that they do. Praise God. Thank God for y'all. They do the hard work of developing our own curriculum. You need to know at Alpha Street, we don't just purchase someone else's curriculum and bring it in. We have a team of dedicated, educated, spirit-led men and women who write our curricula. And I want to thank God for the work that you all do. My prayer for you is if you're not engaged in Sunday school, give it a try. Once you try it, you'll never give it up. So I want you to thank God for our Sunday School Curriculum team once again. Thank you all for the sacrifice you make. And we'll recognize them again in just a moment, but we're also getting back into our season of youth and children's ministries. And our youth and children's ministries volunteers are with us today. They were in retreat this weekend. I'm going to ask that they would stand as well and help me celebrate these men and women who sow into our children. Thank God for you all. They give up almost every Sunday to be in this sanctuary, to be across the street with our children and our youth, pointing them in the direction of the cross of Calvary and allowing them to become what God has destined them to be. And so I thank God for them. They're going to be at the altar in just a few moments as we lift up a prayer over our children and our youth in this fall season. Any anniversaries that we have today, we do want to recognize those who are with us with another year of marital bliss. If God is joined together and no one is put asunder, we're going to ask that you would stand. Will all of our anniversaries stand, if you will? Yeah. 
Listen, we're back in our regular season. This is the fall, so we do call out years. My apologies to all you August anniversaries who get shorted an hour of power, but we do want to recognize. I'm starting to back up my sister here. How many years is this your anniversary? 21, congratulations on your 21st anniversary. Yeah. My brother standing up all the way in the back. How many years is this? 16, Alan, congratulations on your 16th anniversary. My brother, sister, right here, how many years are you celebrating? Two, amen. Aaron and Keisha, how many years is this for you? 10, that's right. I was there. <laughs> and Carlton, what anniversary is this? 38. 38, congratulations, Carlton, on your 38th anniversary. Rosalind came in, where is she? Where's Rosalind at? Rosalind Glenn, I, you upstairs. We, you no, know, the, 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 the treasurer of Delta Sigma Theta doesn't sit upstairs. They come down. We want to welcome the national treasurer of Delta Sigma Theta, all the Deltas in the house. Welcome your national officer. Welcome. All right now, all right now, all right now. As we gather in this space today, we also want to welcome our birthdays. We celebrate the gift of life. If you're celebrating a recent birthday and you know that God has brought you through another year, would you stand and allow us to celebrate with you all of our birthdays, recent birthdays? <laughs> Happy birthday. How many years, Ma? How many are we celebrating? 90th? The night, happy 90th birthday. <laughs> 90 in that church every Sunday. <laughs> Touch David, tell him you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You ought You'll be ashamed, always missing church. She's 90 years old and is sitting in her seat every Sunday. And I guarantee you this, I dare you to try to sit in her seat and see what happened to you. <laughs> you will be moved. Listen, family, if you're new to worship with us, uh, we don't raise an official offering at Alpha Street. It's not because we don't believe in giving. It's because we believe that nobody has to prompt us or promise us in order to give. We all come to this space knowing how good God has been to us. Let me tell you how good God has been to you. You ready? Let me tell you how good I, I know God's been to you. Because you woke up in a house today. Let me tell you how I know how good God has been. You had to choose which outfit you were going to wear to church. Let me tell you how good God's been. Some of y'all had to move a car to get to the car you were going to drive to church today. God's been good to us. And as we mature, no one begs us to give. We pray and we release what God has put on our hearts. God knows what we're able to give. God knows what he calls us to give. And I want to encourage you today to do so, to support the work of the church. Here are a few things that are happening. I want you to know your tithe and offering helps support. You all know that we're in September. We celebrate our 16 years together as pastor and people. This year we're doing it with Thankful Tuesdays. We have worship every Tuesday night um, for the next, this, this upcoming Tuesday and the next Tuesday. I want to invite you to come on and share with us this Tuesday at 7 p.m. either in this space or online. Last week, Bishop Joseph Walker was a tremendous blessing to us with the word he delivered. This week, I want y'all to come on out and hear what is arguably one of my favorite preachers in the kingdom right now. Reverend Dr. Charlie Dates, who's the pastor of both the Salem Baptist Church and Progressive Church in Chicago on the south side. So come on out and cheer with us and worship on this Tuesday as you're able. You all know that we love to worship with our family and friends, um, members who are not local to our area. We have the Alpha Street Experience in Philadelphia. I want to let you know that on October 17th, we're taking Alpha Street to Charlotte, North Carolina. We've got so many members down in that area who just want to be in worship with us and give us the privilege of thanking them for the support they give to us both in their gifts and their prayers. So if you know anyone in the Charlotte area, let them know Alfred Street is coming 
October 17th, we will be at the Belk Theater at the Bloomingthal Performing Arts Center on the 17th of October. Join us this Saturday for our right hand of fellowship, for our communion, but even more so for baptism as we welcome those who've accepted Christ into their life and symbolize it through the ordinance of baptism. That'll be this Saturday at 6 p.m. Coming out and celebrating new life with us as you are able. Members, please don't forget the nominations are still open for the vacancies and leadership and governance within our church family that we will vote on at the end of the year to take leadership in 2025. If you have yet to take a look, I'm encouraging you to do much more than just watch worship, but pray about whether the Lord has called you to help serve and to lead. You can go to our website and get all the information you need on the vacant positions, the time requirements, the experience necessary, the responsibilities, all that you need in order to be prayerful for whether the Lord is calling you. If you will, make certain you get those nominations in by Monday, the 30th of September, by 11.59 p.m., that our nominating committee may put our slate together as we go forth into our annual meeting. Also, just a reminder that next Sunday, after both our 8 o'clock and 11 o'clock service, we will have our open house for our youth ministries. I'm encouraging our parents to join in with us, those who may want to volunteer, to find out the smorgasbord of all the amazing ministries that help our children grow, know, and love and serve Jesus Christ. And so if you would, join us next Sunday after the morning service or this service across the street at 331 and 325 you may be exposed to the amazing things that God has in store for our children. And then finally, please don't forget that in just a few weeks, we're gonna welcome the Reverend Marcus Cosby here to celebrate our 16th anniversary. And then in October, we're going to um, that little storefront church in Houston, um, the Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church to celebrate Pastor Cosby and his 20th anniversary. You know, he's my son in ministry and I'm so proud of of, of how the Lord has used and grown him under my tutelage and my, my prayers. Uh, but we're going to Houston, y'all. We're going to Houston. And you can go online to get all the information you need about how to book your flights, how to get your reservations, how to get in the block of rooms that we reserved, that together we may go over there and make glorious the name of Jesus as we celebrate 20 years of the pastoral leadership of the Reverend Dr. Marcus D. Cosby at the Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. Uh, that being said, before we give, um, I'm going to Take a moment and ask Reverend Goodland to join me as we lift up a prayer today over our students, over our teachers, our administrators, our youth workers. We all know that our world has been shocked again by yet another shooting, this time in Georgia. It hurts my heart to know that we have leadership in this nation. We're more concerned with banning books than banning guns. Um, who? who want to rob a woman of her choice for her reproductive system, but then don't want to protect, protect the lives that they demand be birthed and born. And so as a church, we always need to step up and cover our children and our youth in prayer. Every parent in here, every auntie, every grandmama, every uncle, every titi, every godmama, every godfather knows what it's like to lay a child in the altar of prayer. So I'm going to invite those who want to. I'm going to invite parents, youth, children, our, work, our workers, our teachers, our counselors to come to the altar. If you simply want to stand where you are or stand in the stead of someone who fits that category, we invite you to do so as we get ready to come in and pray. The altar is open for our children, for our youth, our parents, our teachers, our counselors, our volunteers. We may pray over the very special gift of the stewardship of our children. I'm going to ask our Youth Pastor Reverend Goodland to come and lead us as we come to the altar at this time. If you are a teacher, a counselor, an administrator at any level in any school system, just wave a hand, if you will. We thank God these men and women with hands raised who clearly don't do it for the money. 
but do it for a calling that God has given unto them. If you're a parent, you're praying for your child today, won't you lift a hand? With those hands raised, whisper the name of your children even now if you will. If you're a volunteer in our children and youth ministry, would you wave a hand? We thank God for these who serve and sacrifice for our children. Gazelle, lead us in prayer, if you will. God, as we would any other time, we need you right now. God, we need your covering. We need your protection. We need your wisdom. We need your discernment. And God, truthfully, we need space just to release all the sadness, the grief, the anxiety, the worry, the fear that we hold as we go to school and release our children to school. Yeah, yeah. God, there's a family, there is a parent, there are teachers, there are students, there are those wondering how long will this continue to happen? And God, if you are who you say you are, in fact, If you are who your people proclaim you to be, where are you in the midst of this? How come this keeps happening? And God, truthfully, we don't have the answers. But we have the space to talk to you about it. And trust that you will hold it and hold us through. So for those families that are mourning, For those who are walking through grief. For those who are walking through fear and anxiety. God, we see them, you see them. And you will provide what they need in their time of need. And hold them through. God, this is a back to school prayer. But for many who are gathered here, school has already started. And we don't want to overlook the fact that amidst all the fear, all the worry, all the doubts, all the concerns, that God, two, three weeks in, for those who are still here and still trying to press on, we're holding on to our faith. We're holding on and trusting that even though this is a part of the story we do not like, we do not enjoy, we know this is not how the story ends. Because our faith constantly reminds us that wherever there is a Friday, Sunday follows. God, cover each and every one who was gathered at this altar Cover their households, cover their families, cover their classrooms, cover cover wherever it is they serve, wherever it is they release. God, keep their minds, protect their minds, and God, surround them and remind them with people and community that affirms and assures that I'm here with you. Even if we go through this hell together, I'm with you. Even on good days when the storm rains, I am with you. And as long as I know I'm not by myself, but that I have folks who are with me, I can push on just a little while longer. God, we pray for the friendships of our children and youth because there are so many things coming their way And God, we gather in this space at church to keep them grounded in faith and in spirit 
to know that you have plans for them, plans to prosper them and not to harm them, plans to give them a hope and a bright future. And God, there are distractions that will come their way. And we want to assure and affirm them that they still belong to God, that we still belong to you. So God, we ask that as you've already done the past two, three weeks, give us strength to get through this week that's coming. Meet us wherever it is we're heading. Cover us wherever it is we're going. God, we trust and believe. In the midst of it all, we trust and proclaim that you are still able that you will still show up and that you will still come through. So God, we need you. Answer any, answer any prayer that may have not been spoken but have been thought. Answer any or address any concern, any doubt, any worry. God, meet us here today that when we go out, we have what's necessary and what's required to keep doing what you've called us to do. This is a calling. This is a charge to keep that we have. And we want to be faithful to your plan and your will because what you are doing is bigger than what we could see or imagine and we will keep on holding to you. Lord, this is our prayer. In the name of of Jesus, we say amen. We thank the Lord. For healing and the power. We're going to be blessed in song by the male chorus. and Allow God to continue to move. We'll come back and hear the word of God. And then get ready to go out and proclaim the goodness of God the way that we live our lives. Thank you, Mel. We serve a mighty God. His miracles always for us. We're expecting a miracle right now, Lord. I feel the spirit. I feel the You can have it all if you believe. The sky is the limit. Oh, 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 yeah, you can believe it. The sky is the limit. Oh,
thank the male chorus for reminding us that we have the right to expect God to perform a miracle. Can I push it? And expect God to do it every single day. I can wake up tomorrow believing a miracle is on the way. I can face Tuesday knowing that God's not finished yet. Whatever Wednesday's got, he's going to work it out. Whatever Thursday may bring, he's not done with miracles. I expect a miracle every day because that's just the kind of God that we serve thank you God for never running out of miracles thank you for making a way every single day all we got to do is believe and receive it 
and we can watch you perform it. Lord, speak now. Some of us need a realignment in our lives. And we thank you for your words, ability to do that. God, stand through my frailty and my faults and failures and let your glory be seen. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Family, I want to invite you back this morning into what Dr. Judy, I'm now recognizing is one of my most beloved and favorite accounts in Scripture in the Old Testament. The Lord put it on my heart again devotionally this week, and it began to speak to me, and I want to share some of those reflections with you in prayer that it might be a blessing. I want to ask you to journey with me. It'll be on the screens, and you can turn in your Bibles or on your devices to the Old Testament book of 2 Kings. 2 Kings, right after 1 Kings. <laughs> Chapter 7. There are a few verses there that I just believe help give us some course corrections in life. It's our tradition to ask those who are physically able to stand with us as we reverence the reading of the Word of God from 2 Kings chapter 7. I want to begin reading in verse number 3. Won't you listen for the Word of the Lord? (laughs) Now there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate, and they said to one another, Why are we sitting here till we die? If we say we will enter the city, the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. If we sit here, we're going to die also. Now therefore come, let us surrender to the army of the Syrians. If they keep us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we was going to die anyway. And they rose at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians. And when they had come to the outskirts of the Syrian camp, to their surprise, no one was there. For you see, the Lord had caused the army of the Syrians to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses, the noise of a great army. And the Syrians said to one another, look, the king of Israel has hired against us the king of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to attack us. Therefore, they arose and fled at twilight and left the camp intact their tents, their horses, and their donkeys, and they fled for their lives. And when these lepers came to the outskirts of the camp, they went into one tent, ate, and drank, and carried from it silver and gold and clothing, and went and hid them. And then they came back and entered another tent, and carried some there also, and went and hid it. Then they said to one another, y'all, this is not right. This day is a day of good news, and if we remain silent, If we wait until morning light, some punishment will come upon us. Now, therefore, come, let us go and tell the king's household. I like that third verse. They said to one another, why are we sitting here until we die? Do me a favor. Give your neighbor the subject of the sermon. Look over somebody and tell them, neighbor, Neighbor. oh, neighbor, neighbor. it's time to leave. leave. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. It's time to leave. Your life shared openly with friends and even from this pulpit on one or more occasion that I solicit your prayers because I'm in a great season of transition. As I watch the two boys that I used to carry in my arms take their first steps into adulthood. I need your prayer because I'm in my feelings. Deacon V, I'm watching their daily dependence upon me give way to the very things I prayed for and tried to prepare them for. To grow up to be holy, healthy, and happy. To be responsible and respectful to know how to make prayerful decisions in their lives, to surround themselves with the right circle of friends, to wake up every morning with a hunger for excellence, and to recognize that life is best lived standing in the center of the will of God when you're seeking to serve other people. Y'all pray for me. The empty nest is right around the corner. 
And I realized, Paul, that as my sons get older, I'm starting to have different types of conversations with them. We're talking about things now that we did not talk about when they were younger. Y'all pray for me. The last two weeks, I've been going back and forth to Mississippi, getting Deuce moved into his first apartment. And as he moves into his first apartment, we've been having different conversations. <laughs> conversations about his responsibility and liability for what happens in his house. Y'all pray for me, he's about to be 21. It's amazing to me how often soon to be 21 year olds remind you that they're about to be 21. As if somehow you've forgotten how old they are or somehow being 21 makes them an adult. Had the audacity Denzel to ask Deuce what he was excited about being 21 and I probably shouldn't have asked him because his answer to me was, I finally get to go to the club. <laughs> Let me tell you, at 52, my fascination with the club is so far behind me, I can't even remember the last time I went to a club. And I forgot how thrilling the concept of club is to a 21-year-old. So I realized, Stephanie, I need to have some different conversation with him because we never talked about how you behave and what you do when you're in a club. I got to tell you, there's some rules to go into the club. I know you don't know this. You're saved, sanctified. You've been Holy Ghost filled since you were three days old. But on behalf of us recovering sinners, let me testify about club culture. I tell them, number one, when you go to club, Make sure you go with some friends. Don't you ever go by yourself. Take about four or five of your friends with you and never leave a man down. If five of y'all went, five of y'all leave together. I gave him some warnings about the dangers of alcohol and drinking. It's a road you don't really want to start to go down, but I know he's 21, Judy. I know he's going to taste. So I had to give him some rules about drinking and how to learn to drink responsibly. That never drink and drive. Sip slow, don't gulp fast. And never mix your alcohols because beer before liquor. <laughs> Just act like you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Never drink a drink that you've left unattended. If you go to the bathroom, take your drink with you. Most importantly, I said, Deucin, always be attentive and alert. Keep your head on the swivel. Watch out for escalating arguments. Be careful when you see folk pushing each other on the dance floor. And if you ever see somebody arguing and one of them leaves the club saying, I'm going to be right back. <laughs> you leave before they get back. So one of the most important things you got to learn how to do in a club is know when it's time to leave. Know when there's danger in the air. To know that when you're in a space and a place, that's not good for you any longer. Because part of growing up in life, beloved, is being able to discern the signs of when it's time to leave. Now, you may have said amen, but it's amazing how often we as grown folk refuse to leave spaces, People, relationships, jobs, and situations that are no longer good for us. How quickly we get stuck in places that are not godly. 
how often we wind up staying in places where we are not valued and disrespected. How often we settle on things that are beneath us. How we struggle to leave places that we know God is calling us out of. And how quickly we become satisfied with situations that are beneath our God-given possibility. And because we have a tendency to get stuck and stayed and settled and satisfied in ungodly places, I believe God brings to us these four anonymous lepers in 2 Kings chapter 7. Let me give you a little context. It's about 800 B.C. And at that time, Israel, the nation you know, has already been divided into two kingdoms. Ten tribes have separated and formed the kingdom called Israel, whose capital city is Samaria. Two tribes have separated and formed a southern kingdom called Judah, whose capital city is Jerusalem. In 800 B.C., the Syrians, led by a man named Ben-Hadad, have attacked the northern country of Israel, and in common military fashion, they've laid siege to the capital city of Samaria. They surrounded the city and they have cut off water access. They've blocked trade and supply routes. Nothing and no one is getting in or out of the city. And as could be expected, a famine breaks out. And for three years, People in Samaria are dying from starvation and dehydration. And it's in the midst of this famine that we are introduced to four anonymous lepers. They've got leprosy, that skin disease, that skin disease that causes nerve damage, skin disease that causes vision loss, Skin disease that results in respiratory issues. Skin disease that can lead to disability. A skin disease that shows constant nosebleeds. And because leprosy is contagious, according to the Old Testament laws of Leviticus 13 and Numbers chapter 5, Anybody who had leprosy had to live in a quarantine community outside the city because you are contagious. And your disease is a threat to someone else's good health. And Dr. Judy would tell you that because there is the flow of blood out of their nose, the Jews believed that wherever blood was flowing, somebody was unclean. This is why women on their menstrual cycles were deemed unclean. And men and women who had leprosy with the flow of blood, they had to announce it to everybody. If you had leprosy in that day, if you were outside and you saw somebody walk in your way, you had to give them a warning in advance and holler, I'm unclean. Imagine living a life like that, where you got to announce your situation to everybody around you. I wonder who wouldn't have sat on your pew this morning <laughs> if you had to let them know what your real issues are. These are people who are stigmatized, ostracized, stereotyped, rejected, and avoided. L lepers were the kind of folk that when Parents walk their kids to school. They would tell them, don't stare. Lepers were the ones that when they come up to the car with a sign asking for help, you act like you don't see them. Lepers are the ones that when they ask you for some change on your way into the restaurant, you've learned to say, I don't carry cash on me. Lepers are the one when you see them living in tent city, you shake your head and you assume that they're all drug addicts and they brought it on themselves. These are the folk 
you don't deal with in life. The Bible says that these four lepers are sitting there in quarantine and listen to the conversation we're allowed to eavesdrop on. It goes a little something like this. Man, I'm hungry. I'm hungry too. What are we going to do? I don't know because ain't no food in Samaria. One of them says, well, well, I, I got an idea. Hold on. Don't shoot it down. Just hear me out. If we stay here, we going to die. If we go back into Samaria, we going to die. So here's what I suggest. Let's go to the Syrian camp. Let's go to our enemies. And one of two things is going to happen. Either they're going to feed us and we're going to live or they're going to kill us and we're going to die. But if they kill us, we was going to die anyway. So I just come to the conclusion that I ain't going to die here. I've come to the conclusion this ain't good enough for me. I've come to the conclusion this ain't how my story's going to end. I've come to the conclusion I'm not just going to sit here and wait for death to find me, that, that I would rather venture into something new than stay here and die in this situation because now I know it's time to leave. Beloved, when you're there in that time, when you sense that, that where you are is no longer good for you, I want you to remember these three little lessons from these four little lepers and their radical decision to go into the Syrian camp. Can, can I drop four, three little life lessons from these four lepers on you? Here's lesson number one. One of the most important things you've got to learn to do in life is be honest with yourself about the reality of your situation. Let me say it again. I came to play pastor today. You, you've got to learn to be honest with yourself about the reality of your situation. You, you want to know what keeps you in dying places and ungodly spaces? Let me tell you what keeps you in dying spaces and ungodly places. Here's what to keep you in a dying space in an ungodly place. It is not you believing the lies somebody else told you. What keeps you in a dying space and an ungodly place are the lies you told yourself. Oh, that there's nothing worse than a child of God who lies to themselves and convinces themselves that it ain't what it really is or it is what it really ain't. I'm looking for some grown folk who can be honest and declare there have been some moments in your life when you lied to yourself. There have been some moments you fooled yourself. You called it what it wasn't, and you know that it really was what it is. <laughs> look, look, this ain't, this, don't raise your hand, because I don't want your neighbor to know it's you. But you called it love when you knew it was lust. You said it was a relationship, but you knew there was more than one. You was in a situationship. You said it was healthy, but you knew it was dangerous. You told yourself something dysfunctional was normal. You told yourself something was good enough when you know it wasn't good at all. You told yourself it was going to change when you know they ain't never changed a good daggone day in their life and you got stuck in a situation because you lied to yourself. And I came by here to tell you that you can never take control of what you will not name. Let me say it again. You will never take control of what you will not name. Come here, Adam. God tells him you've got authority over everything in the garden, but in order for you to have authority and dominion, your first assignment is to name everything because until you name it, you cannot have authority over it. Until you tell yourself what it really is, you can never walk out of it. Until you acknowledge what you're really dealing with, you can never be delivered from it. you got to be honest with yourself. That's what these lepers do. They look at where they are, and they say, we may not like this, but if we stay here, we're going to die. There's no life here. There's no future here. 
There's no hope here. There's no possibility here. There's no new day here. Nothing's getting better here. There's no change here. And as difficult as it may be, we've got to be honest with ourselves. Y'all, they've been here for three years. They've been in a situation for three years. They've been living with it for three years. So my question is, why y'all trying to leave now? You've been dealing with it this long. You've been living in it this long. You've been making a way this long. You found food this long. Why are you trying to leave now? Because they understood what I want to press on you. There's a difference between living and not dying. Can I say that again? There's a difference between truly living in the fullness of God and not being put in the grave. There's a difference between being okay and being truly happy. There's a difference between avoiding the conversation and being at real peace in your heart. There's a difference between being satisfied and being fulfilled. There's a difference between good enough and what you really deserve in life. There's a difference between getting by and really prospering. There's a difference between being all right and being filled with joy. And you can not be living and not be dying at the same time. That God did not call you to live in misery. God did not call you to live without peace in your life. God did not call you to be in a place that steals your joy. And you will never make a move until you acknowledge that where you are is no longer good for you. I came by to tell someone, stop lying to yourself. You know where I found this out? I found this out in my Aunt Viola's house. Growing up as a kid, I had Aunt Vi, Aunt Vi, she's no longer with us, she's with the Lord. Aunt Vi used to keep me when my mom was busy. And, and if you're not over 40, you're not going to understand this. Uh, my Aunt Vi had a Zenith floor model television. <laughs> it, if you're not over 40, my apologies. Um, a Zenith floor model television weighed about 400 pounds. <laughs> it was this big and the tube was this small. It had two dials on it, the, the UHF and the VHF, and to get to a station, you had to turn. The top ones went from uh, 1 to 12, and then the bottom ones went from 13 to 99. You had to turn to find the station you want, and, and if your station didn't come in well, you would take a little antenna that you screw onto the back and put it on top of the TV, and if that didn't work, then you take some aluminum foil and you put it on the antenna and you'd move the antenna around until you got a clear signal. That's how we used to watch TV. I remember the last time I went to see my Aunt Vi before she passed on, went to see her, she was sitting in her chair watching TV and she had a flat screen on stands that were on top of the floor model TV. And there she is with her remote control, changing a flat screen HD TV that's sitting on top of a Zenith 76 floor model TV, and the antenna was still out with the aluminum foil on it. I said, ain't hey, I don't know how to tell you this, but that Zenith don't work no more. You can't even get a station on that. You, you can't watch TV like that no more. Why are you holding on to something you know don't work no more? Why won't you admit it's broken? Why won't you acknowledge that it's not working? I don't know who I came to talk to today. Please don't throw nothing at the pulpit. But I came by to tell you, if it ain't working, it just ain't working. If it ain't no good, it just ain't no good. If she's lying, she's just lying. If he's low down, he's just low down. If they raggedy, they just raggedy. But at some point... You got to be honest with yourself that this thing ain't working. You got to be honest with yourself. Can I give you number two? You got to get with a crowd that's going somewhere. 
Can I tell you what will keep you in dying spaces and ungodly places? Let me tell you what will keep you in dying spaces and ungodly places. What will keep you in dying spaces and ungodly places is being connected with the wrong people. Howard Thurman, one of my favorite devotional writers, says that life really boils down to two questions. Where am I going and who's going with me? Howard Thurman understood the power or the danger of who's in your inner circle. Maybe you didn't get it from Howard Thurman. Maybe grandmama gave it to you because grandma used to say that association breeds assimilation. Oh, that's too. Grand, grandma used to say that birds of a feather. Fly, oh, you don't know that one? Uh, grandma used to say, if you lay down with dogs, <laughs> don't be surprised when you get up with fleas. It's an understanding. Don't, don't tell me what you're trying to do. Show me who's going with you. Don't show me your vision board. Show me who's on your speed dial list. Don't, don't give me your business plan. Show me who's mentoring you, who's counseling you, who's praying for you, who's in your inner circle. I wish I had a believer that Psalm number one declares that blessed is the one who doesn't walk in the counsel of the ungodly, who doesn't stand in the way of sinners, who doesn't sit in the seat of the scornful, because when you hang with the wrong folk, it'll keep you in the wrong place. Who are you hanging with? Can I teach Bible this morning? I told y'all they're in quarantine outside of Samaria. Samaria is the capital city of Israel. At that time, there are about 30 to 40,000 people in the city. CDC suggests that leprosy untreated has an infection rate of about 4%. So if your math is mathing, that means at this time in Samaria, there had to be at least 1,200 people with leprosy. Let's drop the number to a thousand. A thousand folk are in quarantine and only four of them decide to leave. I'm gonna start again. There are a thousand folk and 996 are content to stay where they are and only four decide it's time to leave. 996 folk were okay with it before decided it isn't. Beloved, you've got to be careful of allowing what is normal for other people to become acceptable for you. I'm going to give you a minute to write that down because you need that. You ought to be careful of allowing what is normal for others to become acceptable for you. Just because they're happy with it doesn't mean you should settle on it. Just because it's okay with them doesn't mean it ought to be all right with you. Just because they don't see anything wrong with it doesn't mean that God has ordained it for you. Just because that's the best they ever had doesn't mean that that's the best God has in store for you. Just because they decide to live in it does not mean God has called you to live in it. Be careful of accepting what is normal for someone else as what God has in store for you. Can I push it? So these four are willing to leave 996 behind. Let me tell you why that's a word. Because one of the ways the enemy keeps you in dying spaces and ungodly places is by giving you a perverted sense of commitment and compassion for somebody else so that you would rather die with them than search out life for yourself. Ooh, let me say it again. The devil will pervert your understanding of commitment and compassion and make you think you owe them something so you would rather stay with them and die than leave and find new life for yourself. I don't know who I came to preach to today, but God did not call you to save anybody. God didn't call you to die for anybody. God didn't call you to sacrifice your joy for anybody. Stop giving up life to die for somebody else. I never want to be connected to anybody 
who wants me to miss the fullness of God's will for my life to keep them happy with my presence in their life. If this ain't of God, let me go. Mm, it's getting quiet. Can I push it? They want to let these folk go. They don't try to persuade the 996 to go with them. Now watch this, y'all. All of them have leprosy, but these four separate themselves. All of them have the same condition, but these four share something else in common. Everybody in here has got leprosy, but these four say there's something different about us. You know what will keep you in dying spaces and ungodly places? Let me tell you what will keep you in dying spaces and ungodly places. What will keep you in dying spaces and ungodly places is when you only connect with people with whom you share a dysfunction. What will keep you dying is when you only connect with folk that all y'all got the same brokenness. That all you all share the same bad habit. That all of you all struggle in the same issue. That's the word. Because misery loves. Y'all know who I can preach today? But all of us can't be miserable. Everybody in my circle can't be angry. If the only thing that connects us is that we don't like her, something is wrong with us. I don't know who I preach to today, but you need some folk in your circle who are bigger than your anger, bigger than your misery, bigger than your struggle, bigger than your dysfunction. You need folk who push you into the will of God, who pray you into excellence, who hold you accountable to God's will in your life. I don't know who I preach to today, but if you're the smartest person in your circle, your circle's too small. If you're the most successful person you know, you don't know enough people. If you're the holiest person in your crew, your crew is too small. You need some folk in your life who desire better than where you are. Well, and that's what I believe brought these four lepers together, that of the thousand in this space, these four believed we deserve better than this. Now that's a word, because remember I told you Leviticus 13 says that quarantine is what you deserve. But when these four decide to move, they're saying that whatever Leviticus 13 said about us ain't true. I deserve better than this. And sometimes, y'all, that's what you got to do. You've got to reject what other people have said about you and tell yourself you deserve better. I'm, I'm, I'm a priest to myself. Let me tell you something. I just believe that God didn't wake me up just to struggle. I just believe that God didn't spare me from the consequences of my sin to let folk treat me any way they want to. I just believe that God didn't save me from hell for me to go back and choose to live in it. I just believe that Jesus didn't die on the cross for me to live in misery and poverty all of my life. I believe that Jesus died that I might have life and have it more abundantly. And at some point, you've got to tell yourself, I deserve better. Matter of fact, I don't want you to touch your neighbor. I want you to touch yourself and say, self, you deserve better than that. You deserve better than that disrespect. You deserve better than that mistreatment. You deserve better than that anger. That You deserve better than that. These lepers teach us, don't ever let where you are, define who you are. I'm going to say that again. Or if I wasn't sick, I'd push this for if. Don't ever let where you are 
define who you are. You know who taught me this? Sister Shirley Ann Forte. So Shirley Ann Forte was my Sunday school teacher when I was growing up at the Lydia Progressive Missionary Baptist Church 10706 South Michigan on the south side of Chicago. It was an old school Baptist church. We'd have Sunday school every morning, every Sunday morning, and then so Shirley Ann Forte was my Sunday school teacher. I remember, Judy, one year we, as a church family, were going to the National Baptist Convention to stand with our pastor as he ran for office. I was a child at the time, maybe about seven, eight years old. We got to the airport, and there we are waiting to board the plane, Many of us from the Lidell Progressive Missionary Baptist Church 10706 South Michigan on the south side of Chicago were standing there at the gate at Midway Airport in Chicago. Sister Shirley Ann Forte walked up. Sister Shirley Ann Forte was dressed like it was Sunday morning. I'm talking about the matching hat with the handkerchief, the shoes. She was dressed like it was Sunday morning. And I looked at my Sunday school teacher, Sister Shirley Ann Forte, and I walked up there and said, Sister, Sister Forte, why, why, why are you dressed up to get on a plane? She said, I'm first class. <laughs> the, the, I, I didn't know, but apparently back then you had to have a dress code to sit in first class. You had to be dressed up. So when they called to board on the flight, Sister Shirley and Forte got on the flight. Then me and my mom and dad, we got on, and to my surprise, when I boarded the plane and got back to row 32, <laughs> Sister Shirley Ann Forte was in row 33. I said, wait one daggone minute, Sister Shirley Ann Forte. You told me you were in first class. She said, I didn't say I was in first class. I said, I am first class. <laughs> and there's a difference, brother man. I don't let where I sit determine who I am. I am who I am where I wish I had some Shirley Ann Fortes in this church today who can declare that I am blessed and highly favored. I am the redeemed of the Lord. I am a daughter made in God's image. I am a brother redeemed by Jesus. I know who I am. Somebody how I know who I am. I, I, gotta, I gotta go, I gotta go. Uh, be honest with yourself. Give the crowd going somewhere. And this is what gets me, y'all, watch this. So they decide to move. I want you to read your Bible to notice the timing in which they moved. The Bible says they moved at twilight. Matter of fact, it says about three times. Somebody say twilight. Twilight, twilight Dr. Judy, uh, in case you didn't know, it's this Hebrew word. Uh, <laughs> it's this Hebrew word, and it's chef, and it, it, it literally translates as dusk. Now, I had to do some research. So, so dusk in Jewish culture is either right before the sun goes down or right before the sun comes up. Dusk is not when things are clear. Dusk is when it's kind of hazy. Dusk is when you can't see which way the road goes. D dusk is when the signs aren't always visible. D dusk is when you can only take it one step at a time. Dusk is when you don't know where the end is, but you decide, if I take the next step, I'll see what the next step is. D -d Dusk means you don't always see it clearly, but you learn to move when you don't see it clearly. Y'all, I'm sorry, I just had to ask these four lepers, why didn't y'all wait for the sun to come up? Why didn't you wait to be able to see things clearly? Why didn't you wait to see the beginning and the end? Why didn't you wait till everything was guaranteed? Why didn't you wait till you had all the answers of what the next step, why didn't you wait until you could see everything? They gave me a word that I just came to pass on to you. You can die waiting on dawn. You can die waiting on everything to be clear. You can die waiting on all the answers to come. 
You can die wanting to see the end before you make the first step. You can die waiting on a promise. You can die waiting on a guarantee. You can die waiting on a contract. At some point, you just got to move at dusk. Somebody say dusk. Don't know how it's going to work out, but you got to make a move. Don't know what the end is going to be, but you got to make a move. Don't know where it's going to go, but you got to make a move. Don't know how God's going to fix it, but you got to make a Somebody holler dusk. I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling well, but I feel like preaching. Uh, I know what happened. I know, it's not in the Bible, but I know what happened because I'm Baptist and I got an imagination. Uh, here, here's what happened. These four told some of the other 996 they about to leave at dusk. And the other 996 tried to talk them out of it by playing one of the devil's biggest games called What If. Let me tell you how the devil will keep you in ungodly spaces and dying places. What if? What if it doesn't work out? What if it doesn't come together the way you want it to? What if you're rejected? What if you lose friends? What if it doesn't work in your favor? And somebody today, you're sitting in Alpha Street Baptist Church here in the house of God with your Bible open, but you got what if on your mind? What if this isn't where God wants me to go? What if this isn't best for me? What if I lose when I make this move? That's how the devil keeps you in that space. So I'm so glad we didn't stop with the move. Yeah. Bible says they got up and they moved at dusk. Yeah. And let me just tell you how the story played out. That they moved at dusk. And when they got to the Syrian camp, the Syrians had left. And they left all their food, all their gold, and all their clothes right where they are. Somebody say, why would they do that? Because God showed up before the lepers did, and God caused a noise that caused the enemy to move, because I came by to tell you that if you make a move, God will make a way. I don't know who needs to hear this, but we serve a God who goes ahead of us, a God who makes ways in front of us, a God who works it out before you get there. I need a witness in this house. Have you ever walked into a prepared situation where you expected the worst, but God had already worked it out? If you make a move, God will make a way. No matter what Tuesday holds, he went ahead of you. No matter what Friday's going to bring, he's going ahead of you. Because if you make a move, just ask Moses. He got down to the Red Sea, and there was no way. But he stretched out his arms. He made a move, and God made a way. Just ask Abraham. He took Isaac up on the mountain, didn't know what was going to happen, but lifted up his knife. And when he made a move, God made a way. Just ask David. He went down in the valley, didn't know how he was going to win, but took his rock. And when he made a move, God made a way. Just ask Jesus. I don't want to die. But Lord, thy will be done. And when he died, he made a move. And early on Sunday morning, God made a way. When you make a move, God will, God will make a way.
Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know who this is for, but go ahead and make a move. You don't know how it's going to work. You don't know when it's going to work. But if you trust God, God will make a way out of no way. Oh, I got to, come on, let's stand and get out here. Uh, Y'all, can, can I, can I close this sermon? Can, can I, can I taught you something about God real quick? Can I learn you something about the Lord? God is so omnipotent and God is so sovereign that when you move at dusk and you don't know how it's going to work out, God always has a way of working things together for your good. Yo, I'm, I'm gonna teach you, I'm gonna teach you, I'm gonna teach you one word. I'm gonna teach you one word that shows how much faith you have in God. One word that lets the world know you trust God. That whenever you've got the what ifs in your mind, there's one word that shows you trust God. One word that I know God will handle it. You ready for that one word? I want you to write down, I want it to be your next tattoo. Here's the word. Somehow. That's my answer when I don't know how. Somehow. How is God? I don't know. But somehow, some way, God is going to fix this thing. Somehow, God will see me through. Those things Jesus say, I know the Lord will make a way. Somehow, I wish I had a believer. I know the Lord will make a way. Somebody holler somehow. So listen, you're here today. God says it's time to be honest about your situation. You're not dying, but you're not living in the fullness of God. You are not where God wants you to be. God said to someone, it's time for you to get with a crowd that's going somewhere. You, you've been with wrong people. You're in a circle of dysfunction. You need to be in a community that's pushing you into the will of God. Stop accepting the normal of others. Stop allowing others to talk you out of what God's calling you into. Beloved, my brother, my sister, you gotta make a move at dusk. When you don't know how it's gonna turn out, when you don't know every answer, God says, take the first step and I'll go ahead of you. God's working it out, my sister. God's working it out, my brother. But you got to make a move today. And for somebody, that move is to say, I, I don't know everything about salvation, but, but, but I want to know how much God loves me in Jesus. That for somebody, it's, it's, it's accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. For somebody, it's time to get with a crowd that's going somewhere. My, my brother, my sister, come on, Melvin. How, how many Sundays are you going to visit? How long are you going to test the water? How long before you say, okay, God, I'm, I know you're calling me and today I'm making a move. I, I don't know all the answers. I don't know the church's position on that and what the pastor did then and all this, but I can't believe God's calling me to make a move. So if you are here today, my brother, my sister, as our deacons come to the altar, if you're here and you're ready to be real about your life and that you need a savior, if you're ready to connect with a church family that's going somewhere, if you're ready to make a move even though you don't know how it's going to turn out, I extend an invitation for you to make a move from where you may be standing in the sanctuary in overflow. Make your way to the altar as the Lord will leave you. God said, make the first step and I'll go ahead of you. God's waiting for you at the altar today, my sister. God's waiting for you, my husband, my wife. God's waiting for you, family, to come and say yes to the Lord. If you're watching online, the same invitation is for you. All you need to do is go out to our website or even put it in the chat and we will reach out to you right now to share with you what God has. Beloved, people are making a move. Would you help me celebrate that God is already making a way? Bless you, my brother, my sister, my sister, my brother. 
Yes, brother, God is calling you today. Yes, sister, in Jesus' name, yes. Yes, 18, come on. The Lord is calling someone today. Yes, my sister. Yes, yes, they're coming, they're still coming. God is still making a way as they make the move. Believe. Believe in your heart to know Jesus. Come on, family. You can know Jesus in your heart. Do you know Jesus? If you're watching online, do us a favor. Don't think that because you're not in this space that this is not for you. If God is calling you today, we want you to go to our website, fill out our membership form. You can put your name and your contact in the chat. We'll get it to our deacons. We'll reach out to you even on today. Do you know Jesus? Family, won't you pray with me? Lord, this morning when you and I talked, I asked you, God, to move on the heart of at least seven men or women to give their life to you today. For these eight that have come, we give you thanks that you still go exceeding and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. They come today, oh God, being honest with themselves that everything is not where it should be. They come searching for a crowd that doesn't condemn or judge, but pushes them in love to deserve and desire more. And God, here they are making a move at dusk. Lord, I pray that you show them that you've already gone ahead of them in their membership in this place, in their walk in life. And God, that since they made a move, you're going to make a way. We welcome them with joy and receive them in Jesus' name. We do pray. Amen. Before you sit down, help me celebrate new life and salvation and membership in this church family. You may be seated, family. To all of our new members, we welcome you. Our deacon's going to take you to our reception room. Look at what God has done to God be the glory. Listen, as we get ready to leave this place, do me two favors, if you will. Be mindful of all the announcements that were lifted up in your hearing and know that we can only do that which God has called us to do through the generosity of your giving, through your obedience to the Holy Spirit. Do me a favor, don't let the sun go down today without trusting God enough to render the offering and the tithe that God has enabled you to give. Then do me a favor, whatever happens this week, whatever comes your way, whatever it may be, we'll be in worship on Tuesday, whatever the other days will bring, do me a favor, just remember one word, somehow. Let's leave in the grace and the peace of God. Family, my deepest apologies. The open houses for youth ministry are next Sunday. So not today, but next Sunday. Thank you, Reverend Denzel. Let's look to the Lord to be dismissed. And now to the Almighty and the All-Wise, the Sovereign and the Eternal, the Faithful and the Omnipotent God who alone is Creator of heaven and earth, to the God who's made God's self perfectly known to us in Jesus, who always and alone is our Christ. He is our loving Lord, our sacrificial Savior, our resurrected, risen, reigning, returning Redeemer, to the God who chooses to dwell in these earthen vessels of clay, 
through the sustaining power, promise, presence, purpose, and person of the Holy Spirit. To that almighty God be glory and majesty, dominion and power from now until eternity. And the redeemed of the Lord who loved the Lord and awaited his return said amen. Amen. Go in the grace of God and may the grace of God go with you. Welcome to the Alfred Street Worship Experience. We sincerely appreciate your presence, whether you're joining us in person at 8 a.m. or 11 a.m. this Sunday or live streaming online via our website and social media platforms. Your participation is a vital part of our community. We are thankful and beyond blessed that you remain faithful in your giving. We have several giving platform options available. You can give through the ASBC app, Text 73256 or scan this QR code, which will take you directly to our website's giving page. If you have any questions regarding giving, submit them to finance at alfredstreet.org. If you want to become a member of the historic Alfred Street Baptist Church, please email deacons at alfredstreet.org or complete the membership form on our website or the ASBC app. The power of prayer is transformative. Here at Alfred Street, we make prayer a priority for our community. Join us Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. If you can't join live, visit the ASBC website to listen to the daily prayer recordings. Join engaging co-hosts every Sunday for our fun and engaging pre-show, The Prelude, which connects our online viewers live in the sanctuary every Sunday at 7.36 a.m. and 10.36 a.m. Alfred Street. Grace and peace be unto you from God who loves us as a mother and a father, and Jesus Christ who always and alone is our resurrected, our risen, our reigning, and our returning Redeemer. August is done. Summer is ended. Here we are in the fall. We're just a few months away from our annual meeting where, as always, we will elect the slate of leaders to fill some of the vacancies for leadership that are available at the church council level, at our committee levels, at our church officer levels. I want to let you know that as of today, September 1st, those applications are available online. Prayerfully, you've had an opportunity to read the description of some of those vacancies on our website or using the QR code, but now applications are open. I'm hoping that you've been prayerful. Maybe God is calling you to help steward and serve our church family. Or maybe there's someone you know who would be a great addition to the legacy of leadership here at Alfred Street. But do me a favor, let's get those nominations in so that we can be prepared to see whom God has called to serve when we get to our annual meeting. Once again, applications are now available for the leadership positions that are vacant at the Alfred Street Baptist Church. I look forward to serving with you.
parents, we invite you and your school age children to attend our Children and Youth Open House on Sunday, September 15th from 9.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. or 12.30 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. This is a unique opportunity for your children to experience our three distinct ministries for elementary, middle, and high school students, providing a safe, fun, and spirit-led environment on Sundays. We're excited for them to join us and we're sure they'll have a great time. We look forward to seeing you and your children at this open house where you can get your questions answered, meet volunteers, and meet other parents and youth. Bereavement of a loved one can be inconvenient, complex, and overwhelming if left unprocessed. Adults over 18 are cordially invited to join the Grief Share Ministry for our fall session, a 13-week grief recovery community beginning Thursday, September 12th. This is a safe space where you can find support and understanding during this difficult time. Scan the QR code or go to our website to register and take the first step towards healing. Alfred Street Who's Who Ministry has a volunteer information session, Entrepreneur Showcase, where you will learn about different serving opportunities. If interested, you can attend in person or online on Saturday, September 14th. Go to our website to register today. Alfred Street. Every second Saturday, you can join us for a special ordinance service at 6 p.m. This is a special time where we welcome new members with the right hand of fellowship, witness baptisms, and join together for communion. We look forward to having you be a part of this inclusive and welcoming community. Every Saturday in September, men can participate in a transformative four-part series led by Dr. Reston Bell, a licensed clinical psychologist. This series will delve into childhood experiences, profound influence on adult lives. It is entirely virtual from 11 to 12.30 p.m. Don't miss this opportunity. Scan the QR code to register today. The men's monthly session of Men's Real Talk, Divine Dialogues, Expressions and Experiences in Prayer will be held in person only on Wednesday, September 18th at 6 p.m. Dinner will be served. Register today so you won't miss out. We have exciting news. The Women's Ministry presents Going Beyond Simulcast with Priscilla Shirer. We'll stream the simulcast in our sanctuary. Join us on September 21st at 9 a.m. for a day filled with fellowship, Bible study, and worship. There's limited space, so please register today. The ASBC Wellbeing Ministries 2024 Virtual Fall Session of Divorce Care will begin on Tuesday, September 17th from 7 to 9 p.m. Divorce Care is a divorce recovery support group where you can find help and healing for the hurt of separation and divorce. Visit the ASBC website to register or scan the QR code on the screen. Also, we invite you to tune in to our Faith Forward Weekly Radio Broadcast featuring Pastor Howard John Wesley every Sunday morning at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Magic 102.3 FM and 92.7 FM for a powerful sermon that will move you forward in your faith. Hey, Alfred Street family and friends. Are you visiting us for the very first time? Or perhaps you're new to Alfred Street and you want to stay connected to us or receive the latest Alfred Street updates via text. If so, all visitors text the word visitors with an S to our new direct text number, 571-977-4525. That's 571-977-4525. We want to thank you for tuning into Alpha Street's live worship experience. Again, this is Charnell King, Social Media Manager. For more information on what's happening here at Alpha Street, make sure to check out our website and social media platforms. We hope you have a blessed week.